I love iceberg charts. For those of you who don't know, an iceberg chart is basically a tier list, but instead of ranking things from best to worst, it ranks them from common knowledge to largely unknown theories, legends, etc. They first became a thing back in 2016, I believe, but became relevant again this year after the infamous Super Mario 64 iceberg went extremely viral, spawning similar charts about other video games and also explanation videos that boosted their popularity even further. Some of my favorites include the recent Lost Media Iceberg video made by Blame It On Jorge, FNAF Iceberg video by Trashy Blinder, the Minecraft trilogy by Retro Gaming Now, Mario 64 Iceberg video by Sunflower, and, of course, the Mario 64 Iceberg video by Mishkas. The one that inspired me to make my own Iceberg explanation video was made by Space Guy Online about Team Fortress 2. I originally wanted to make a video about a GTA Iceberg since it's my favorite video game franchise. But believe it or not, I was unable to find a good GTA chart. I guess I could make it myself, but making this video took some time of its own. So I imagine creating a chart and making a video on it would take literal ages. However, there are several good TF2 icebergs. And TF2 is one of my other favorite games, so after watching Space Guy's video, I picked a different iceberg. Specifically this one, created by user, uh, Reddit user, Knight or KN111GHT and started my research. During the process of writing the script, I realized that some of the entries were already covered by Space Guy in his video, so I'm just gonna quickly highlight them right here. I will not discuss these entries. If you want to learn more about them, go watch Space Guy's video. It's it's very good. Now, with that out of the way. Random crits. The majority of weapons in the game have a chance of critically hitting an opponent at random. There's a good video by Delphi explaining what exactly random crits are, what are the chances of randomly hitting an opponent with a critical hit, and what factors it depends upon. Alternatively, you can read the TF2 wiki article on the subject. Both of these will be linked in the description. Now, I suspect the reason behind its inclusion on the iceberg may have to do with the statement that Random crits are fair and balanced, which became a meme in the TF2 community. Just googling the phrase brings out a ton of results, discussions, videos on the topic, etc. With advocates both for and against random crits. Rick May Rick May was the late voice actor for Soldier, who sadly passed away in April this year. On May 1st, Valve commenced a month-long tribute to Rick May with bronze soldier statues placed on the most active official maps, among other things. Random voice lines of Soldier would play as players stood near the statue, and a permanent tribute, that of the bronze soldier statue and severed heads as seen in the Meet the Soldiers short, was added to the granary map on August 21st. However, I'm not certain as to why his name was added to the iceberg. Perhaps it has to do with the earlier mentioned piece of trivia about soldier voice lines being played near the bronze statues. Maybe. Uris. Uris is one of the numerous classic TF2 memes. It revolves around one of Heavy's voice lines. Put this Spencer here! As Heavy is Russian and has a heavy accent, the first two words are slurred and can be interpreted as Putis Spencer. Putis quickly became a widespread meme akin to Pingus a similar meme originating from the TV cartoon Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, and Puris has been used in numerous Gmod and SFM animations and YouTube poops throughout the years. Get good, get Lamau Box. Lamau Box is one of the most notorious cheats for TF2, which has all the basic functionalities of your usual cheat for an, out for an online FPS game, such as aimbot, wall hack and more, and many, many other options. You know the drill. The particular phrase associated with it is the titular get good get Lamau box, which the user can spam in the in-game chat. There's a command for that too. Hat Simulator. This is a joke name for Team Fortress 2 that both ridicules and criticizes the increasing amount of cosmetics that are constantly added to the game instead of actual improvements. And with the recent events surrounding TF2, the source code leak, the overabundance of cheaters in official servers, as well as lack of major updates since 2017's Jungle Inferno, if you of course don't include the seasonal Stream Quarters and Smithmas updates, this is becoming more relevant again. Lit Huntsman Arrows Huntsman is a bow that can be used by snipers instead of rifles. Its arrows can be lit on fire by either friendly pyros, 
or torches on the map the Groot Keep. Why exactly is this item on the iceberg though? Well, there is one reason I can think of possibly. Lit arrows are not technically extinguished by water, they are only visibly extinguished, but they still light targets on fire. But other than that, it's just a regular projectile, so make of that what you will. Casual bots. This relates to a recent issue on casual matchmaking, wherein an epidemic of bots plagued official casual servers for quite a while, rendering gameplay almost impossible due to cheating and forcing lags. It appears that the issue is still not fully resolved, as evident in the recent survey held by Faceit on r tf2, and Valve only managed to patch out for slagging. Kitty0706 Kitty0706 was the online pseudonym of Colin Wyckoff, a prominent YouTuber who created many iconic Gmod and SFM animations revolving around TF2 characters, including the cult classics Moments with Heavy and Team Fabulous 2. In 2012, Colin was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, and sadly, in January 2015, after a long battle with the disease, he passed away. Many friends and fans paid tribute to Colin in the form of videos, and on July 6th, 2020, which would have been Colin's 26th birthday, a community-wide remake of Team Fabulous 2 was released after 7 months of hard work with over 100 animators and artists taking part in its production. Coaching is broken. Coaching is a mechanic that allows more experienced players to help new ones learn the ropes of the game faster and more efficiently. Coaching was added to the game way back in 2011. To enlist yourself as a coach, you need to click the megaphone button in the main menu, and if you require assistance from a coach, you need to click the whistle button in the main menu while in a game. Well, the pause menu. Select whether you want to choose a coach from your friends list or any available coach and wait. Ever since coaching was introduced to the game, it was ridden with bugs and issues, and after the Meet Your Match update in 2018, it became impossible to either help new players as a coach or get assistance as a student on official service. For more information regarding this topic, watch the video by Hamaji Neo linked in the description below. Telefragging A telefrag is a type of kill that occurs if a player is too close to the teleporter exit as a disguised enemy spy uses it. Any players that occupy the same space as the teleporting enemy are instantly killed and the teleport completes successfully. Allies cannot be telefragged even if friendly fire is turned on. No clue as to why this is on the iceberg except that maybe, since it's an unusual way of killing opponents, it's deemed as obscure. Probably, I don't know, whatever. Sniper's Scar Sniper has a visible scar under his left eye as a result of his encounter with Spy in the Meet the Spy short. The scar was added to his in-game model in 2009 with the Sniper vs Spy update. Nothing more to it than that. Backcapping. One of the techniques on 5 point control point maps, backcapping is basically a countermeasure to the opponent's attempt at capturing your team's point. Most effectively performed by scouts, it requires the player to capture an enemy point while one of your teams is being captured simultaneously. If successful, backcapping grants your team a significant territorial gain and pushes the enemy team way back, but it's a very risky action. Updated localization files. This phrase is constantly seen in update changelogs and it became a meme in the community. I don't believe there is much more to it than that though. Trimping. One of the methods of movement in TF2, trimping is a complicated maneuver performed by Demoman players which involves the tie turner and source engine physics. When mastered, trimping allows skilled Demoman players to travel across the map and effectively ambush enemies. YouTube user Nate Fox has a tutorial on how to trimp, where he explains the maneuver itself and how to perform it much better than I ever could, so I'll just link it in the description. Cheater's Lament Cheater's Lament is a cosmetic item that was given to players in 2009 and 2010. Back then, the item drop system worked differently. Every 25 minutes, players had a 25% chance of getting an unlockable weapon, and approximately each 4 hours, 17 minutes, and 10 seconds, there was a 1 to 28 chance of getting a hat. Trading and marketplace have not yet been introduced to the game at that point. A player by the name of Drunken Fool created an idling program that allowed players to receive said item drops when, while the game was running in text mode, and Valve soon found out about this exploit and patched the program out. 
Those who did not use it received the titular Shader's Lament, and it was redistributed during the 2010 Man Economy update to all players, even those who used the program initially. Drunken Fool was then hired by Valve. Currently, there is no legal way to get Cheater's Lament. Bleeding Immunity to Health Kits I couldn't find anything related to this entry on the iceberg, no matter how and where I searched. Except this discussion on the Bleeding article on TF2 Wiki. Now, the Bleeding mechanic was added to the game in May 2010, along with Tribalman's Shiv, the first weapon that could cause bleeding. And as seen on the picture, Firestorm asked whether health kits stopped bleeding now, as of July 2010, suggesting that for some period of time, prior to that message, health kits did not stop bleeding. Additionally, user Kid of the Century questioned in December of that year if it should be noted that small health kits don't stop the bleeding. I can't confirm whether these two messages described something that was true in TF2 back in 2010 because I didn't play the game then. So my speculation here may be, and probably is, completely inaccurate. So if anyone can clear this up in the comments, please do. Item verification. This is a scam scheme, pure and simple. If you're ever asked by a supposed Steam admin to verify your items, do not engage with them. TF2 items don't require verification and you won't get banned for carrying illegal items. For more information, read Steam Rep's statement on this issue linked in the description. First, in Pyro's Locker. If you look in Pyro's Locker at spawn, you can notice a team-colored purse with a flower drawing on the upper shelf. Since Pyro's gender is a much debated topic in TF2 lore, people consider this as proof that Pyro is female. SV underscore cheats. This is a console command on source-based games that can allow the player to turn cheats on and off, and, of course, it's present in TF2. Unlike the much more malicious external cheating programs like the Lamao box mentioned earlier, SV underscore cheats is available to use on servers that have them turned on and won't get the player a vag ban. Also, the majority of game allowed cheats are harmless. Heavy has a PhD in Russian literature. Despite his exterior, Heavy does actually have a PhD in Russian literature, as he himself says during one of the conversations in the game Poker Night at the Inventory. Went to Soviet College of Mines, Farms and Science. I have PhD in Russian literature. Do you use that in your line of work? More than you think. In the Russian version of Meet the Heavy, his language is noticeably more eloquent and sophisticated than in the original version. Take a look. Black Box and Conjura Immortality Black Box and Conjura are soldiers' weapons that both grant health bonuses. Black Box gives its bearer up to 20 health on hit, and Conjura is a passive healer that regenerates 4 health each second. Due to these buffs, a combination of those on a skilled soldier player can render them almost impossible to kill. Many players, however, despise this combo, calling it a crutch and a waste of damage potential. Random Spread I assume this relates to random bullet spread on bullet-type weapons. All I could find about this entry is a general dislike towards random bullet spread among the TF2 community. If you can add some more information in regards to this, please do in the comments below. RD underscore Asteroid Asteroid is the only map made for the unique Robot Destruction game mode. Its beta version was introduced in July 2014, and the main goal of the map is to obtain 300 points faster than the opposing team. To get points, players can either destroy enemy robots or steal enemy reactor core akin to capture the flag. Since December 2014, the map has not received updates, and it is currently not in official rotation in casual mode. As of this day, Asteroid, along with another map introduced at the same time, Cactus Canyon, remain in beta. Level 2 sentries fire faster. There is no proof of that particular claim. As stated in the TF2 wiki, the attack interval of level 2 and level 3 sentries is the same if you don't count the level 3 sentry rockets, which are significantly slower, but are also a different type of ammunition. However, a lot of players advocate for level 2 sentry superiority for different reasons. Smaller hitbox and visibility, quick building time and quicker redeployment, 
less metal required, plus Pyros can't deflect Sentry's rockets because, well, there are no rockets on a level 2 Sentry. Fat Scout meta. Fat Scout is a community name for a heavy playstyle during which you don't use the primary weapon, minigun, and instead only opt for the secondary, which is a shotgun, although not the same type of shotgun that the actual scout uses. Meta in online gaming terminology is an abbreviation that stands for Most Effective Tactic Available. And cases are made for a fat scout to be meta, but that of course depends on the player. Spy has three arms. There are images and videos of the spy having three arms. But this is nothing more than a graphical glitch. It is strange, however, that this bug went unnoticed for so long. Detonator Jumping A method of movement in TF2 available for Pyros which isn't too hard to master. To perform a detonator jump, you need a detonator, a secondary pyro weapon, pretty self-explanatory. While obviously not as powerful as rocket jumps, detonator jumps can help players cross decently sized gaps and climb ledges. A detonator jumping tutorial can be found in the description. SV underscore pure. This is a console command which can restrict players from using custom skins, models and other mods if fully enabled. There are three states for SV pure. Zero, which is default and allows the player to use any modified files. One, which restricts the player to only using allowed files specified in a whitelist. And two, which restricts the player from using any modified files, including both harmful custom files that can give an advantage and cosmetic custom files such as skins and sprays. Other mercs spawn with 100 metal. I could not find any information regarding this entry, unfortunately, so again, if you know anything about this, let me know in the comments. Pyro is a homosexual male. As mentioned before, Pyro's gender is a much debated topic, along with his sexuality. Earlier in his YouTube career, long before being consumed by the FNAF rabbit hole, MatPat proposed that Pyro is a homosexual male based on his scientific research. And while his arguments are kinda solid, they don't necessarily prove anything because, well, it's a video game character. Valve themselves remain deliberately inconsistent when answering questions about Pyro's gender, let alone sexuality. Flying Guillotine Intangible I don't know exactly what this refers to and which definition of the word intangible is used for this entry, since English isn't my native language. But even if we assume it, it's the most common definitions, which are impossible to touch and not having physical presence, I couldn't find anything related to this entry. If you have any thoughts or theories, leave them in the comments. Meet the Medic Outtakes Valve published four crudely animated and dubbed outtakes from the Meet the Medic video shortly after its publication. Notably, one of these outtakes explains the origins of Spy's severed head in the Medic's fridge and how the idea of ubercharging came to his mind. Upside Down Payload Sometimes, when playing on a payload map, you may encounter this bug of the card being upside down. That's it, really. Exclamation mark give me all. This chat command unlocks all achievements and is present on specific servers that usually serve the purpose of getting said achievements the easy way. Soldier is a lawyer. I couldn't find concrete evidence that this is true, but in the comics, Soldier was once the public defender of Scout in court, as mentioned in issue 2 of the official TF2 comic called Unhappy Returns. And in the same issue, he insists to be Scout's public defender again after killing the actual lawyer. Meet the spy frame. I can only assume that the iceberg entry refers to this image, aptly named Cursed Meet the Spy Frame on r slash TF2. The significance of this? I don't know. Moving on. TF2 isn't dying. A popular notion in recent years has been that TF2 is slowly dying due to a lack of major updates, again not including the seasonal ones, and Valve's apparent abandonment of the game and focus on other titles such as CSGO and Dota 2. The recent bot issue in casual matchmaking only drives this point further. However, despite all of this, TF2 still retains a rather large player base and Valve have addressed some of the more recent issues like the Great Depression of 2019 and the casual bots crisis even though it took two potentially game-destroying events for them to finally show that they still care. So simply saying that TF2 is dying is rather 
ignorant in my opinion. Valve Rocket Launcher As you know, items in TF2 can have different qualities. In total, there are currently 12 types of qualities, and by far the rarest and the most unobtainable of these is the Valve quality, given to certain items in possession of Valve employees. The Valve rocket launcher that the iceberg refers to belongs to Robin Walker, one of the lead designers of TF2. The weapon in question is, to put it bluntly, fucking ridiculous and has major buffs like plus 1,009,900% damage bonus or on hit gain up to 250 health, basically rendering its carrier an invincible killing machine. Respawn Timer Loop this appears to be a bug that causes the respawn timer to infinitely repeat itself, disallowing the player to actually respawn. The earliest account of this that I could find dates all the way back to 2010, when the game hadn't been yet converted to the free-to-play model, and the bug seems to still remain unfixed somehow. Current CEO of Manco My research on this entry has led to conflicting reports, so if I get this wrong, feel free to correct me. In issue 5 of the official TF2 comic, the latest acting CEO of the company, Grey Man, dies after the classic heavy rips apart his life extender machine. This leads to the corporate succession crisis. What happened afterwards is unclear to me, since I didn't read the comics actually or educate myself about any kind of TF2 lore really, but several sources claim that Olivia Mann, Grey's daughter, took over the company after winning it from Saxton Hale and I quote, by technicality using the Manco rule regarding transfer of ownership by victory in unarmed combat. However, the same wiki lists Saxton Hale as CEO2 on his own article. It's a bit complicated, so if someone knows the game's lore better than me, please explain this situation in the comments. CL underscore interp manipulation. I don't entirely understand the concept or purpose of CL underscore interp. It is a console command and apparently it has to do with your internet connection and packet delivery to TF2 servers, but I'm unsure about that. And since I can't properly explain it, I suggest you watch a video made by R on the subject which will be linked in the description. As for the manipulation part, this can be seen as a means to make it easier to kill enemies which I assume is what the creator of the iceberg intended. Linux Vagbands In 2018, a wave of bots with the word catbot in their names flooded the game's servers, prompting Valve to initiate a mass ban of said accounts. And apparently, a few Linux users who too had catbot in their names but didn't have to do anything with bots or their creators were banned as well. So people speculated that players would get an automatic Vagban for having the word in your name. A Valve employee later cleared the situation up by saying that VAC cannot ban users solely based on their names, and instead blamed the cheaters for creating the initial bug report and trying to, quote, sow discord and distrust against anti-cheat systems. Scrapped 10th class For years, fans speculated about the non-existent mythical 10th class of the game. During development, three different potential candidates for the 10th class were scrapped. The Civilian, a remnant of TF2's predecessors TF1 and TF Classic. The Commander, which would have essentially been a spectator who would support their team. And the female classes created by Drew Wolf, a former Valve design artist who shared his concept art of them. Some of the Commander's functionality was later repurposed for the coaching mechanic of the game, and the Civilian class saw life in the Team Fortress 2 Classic mod. Another infamous 10th class was the fan-made Guard Dog. Glorified Toaster with Legs This is related to a complaint made by an r slash tf2 user the Wombat from Hell about the bots taking the place of players who abandoned competitive matches. In his complaint, the Wombat from Hell jokingly refers to the bots as glorified toasters with legs. A, a week later, Valve released an update that added glorified toaster with legs to the pool of names randomly assigned to bots, poking fun at the complaint. CP Gorge Blue Spawn is its own map. Okay, so I initially thought that this was related to the blocked off section behind the Blue Spawn that could potentially lead to an expansion of CP Gorge, but in reality, as Knight himself explained, this actually alludes to Item Test, a testing map released with the Australian Christmas update that is a modified version of the Blue Spawn. The map is intended for players to test the functionality of their creations as well as items, cosmetics and particles. 
Missing NG Hitbox. In 2016, a video by the TF2 YouTuber Mr. Paladin brought forth a serious issue relating to the Engineer class. Turned out, the Engineer had a missing hitbox in his crotch region. A week later, however, Valve fixed this bug. Quick play queuing to community servers. Now, this one I don't entirely understand. Before casual matchmaking was introduced in 2016, a similar system called Quick Play was present. Quick Play gave the player an option to of which game mode they want to play and which servers, Valve or community they want to play on, so why is this on the iceberg? I don't exactly know. If you can, please clear this up in the comments for me. Species of Friendlies There is a whole ass glossary on species of friendly players in TF2. Among which the most well known are the Hoovy and the Spycrab, who basically play the game not to win but to have fun. I'll leave a link to a Steam guide that lists all the random wacky species of TF2 players in the description below, so you can read it for yourself because, trust me, there are so many of them that I could make a separate video on it. Pyro without a mask. There exists supposed concept art of Pyro not wearing his iconic mask. The validity of this image is unknown, as the official TF2 wiki doesn't include this picture on the Pyro article. And the origin of the picture itself is unknown, at least to me. Different early concept art of Pyro, however, can be seen on his TF2 wiki article, both with and without his mask. 245 245 is the name of a Capture the Flag map from the original Team Fortress mod for Quake. Due to its popularity, it served as the basis for both 2Fort and Team Fortress Classic and subsequently 2Fort and Team Fortress 2, being among the first six maps created for the release of the game. 2Fort 5 shares the overall structure and many basic similarities with its TF2 counterpart. As the name suggests, 2Fort 5 wasn't the only version of this map, and you can find information on 2Fort 4, which is supposedly an earlier version. Additionally, a history of 2Fort can be found on Game Banana. According to it, the very first 2Fort map was released in August 1996. Poison 2Fort Water 2Fort is the fictional town located in the American Southwest. The town adjoins the facility of 2Fort. As revealed in issue 2 of the official TF2 comic, the water supply of 2Fort has for years been poisoned by the chemicals, specifically lead, coming from the facility. Miss Pauling goes on to say that due to this, mercs are given bottled water instead. 07180125 Barely Melted Capacitor is a cosmetic item for all classes. A combination of numbers 07180125 can be seen on the item. Slitting the numbers into four pairs and translating them into letters, with one meaning A, two meaning B, etc., results in the word grey which almost certainly relates to Grey Man, the former CEO of Manco. The capacitor was added to the game first as Damaged Capacitor, a crafting ingredient, in June 2012. Shortly before the Man vs Machine update dropped in August of that year, the item was updated with its current name and purpose, possibly hinting at the fact that the capacitor in some way is related to the robots Grey Man built in his attempt to destroy Manco. VSH underscore Castle underscore Knight so, first of all, VSH stands for Custom Game Mode vs Saxton Hale, where the combined forces of the Mercs must defeat Saxton Hale, a randomly chosen player possessing an absurd amount of health and very powerful attacks. Now, Castle Knight was an old map for the game mode which was unlike other maps. It was very spacious and dark, with many hidden locations and horror elements, specifically jump scares, that can be discovered during gameplay. The map was thought to be lost to time until June of this year, when it suddenly resurfaced on r slash creepygaming and github. You can download the map to see it for yourself by clicking a link in the description. CTF underscore Badlands As you may know, the TF2 Badlands map is control point map, with Arena and King of the Hill variants of it also present. CTF underscore Badlands is the name of its predecessor from Team Fortress Classic. Now, I don't know why exactly this is not only on the iceberg, but also this low on the iceberg. I assume it's because, at the end of the day, TFC is a rather obscure game, so this makes for an interesting research entry. But as far as I'm aware, there are no secrets, easter eggs or urban legends associated with CTF Badlands. Level 4 Sentries Besides the very obvious jokes that can be found on the TF2 subreddit, 
The only information related to this entry that I could find was about a boss of the man vs. machine prototype which was called Raid. More info on that later. The boss was called Mecha Level 4 Sentry and files possibly related to it were discovered at some point before May 2013. Additionally, a supposed model of this boss was also leaked at some point in the past. By the looks of it, Mecha Level 4 Sentry was supposed to have two rocket launchers, a laser pointer or an actual laser and a teleporter on top of it, possibly to teleport its fellow robots. Background 01, MVM underscore example and dev test. These are the names for unused maps that can be found in the game files. Background 01 is a version of Stage 3 of Dust Bowl, intended for use as a background map in the main menu. MVM underscore example is, as its name suggests, an example map that comes with, with the source SDK, showing the minimum needed entity setup for a functioning man vs machine map, which is also suggested by the MVM designation in its name. DevTest is a variant of 2 fort with all of the textures replaced by dev textures giving it a rather eerie look. For more information regarding these maps, I suggest watching Humobil's video about them. Link, as always, is in the description. Venture Bros TF2 Promo A commercial for Venture Bros featuring the characters of TF2 watching the eponymous cartoon aired on Adult Swim in June 2013. Have you seen wearing Brock's locks, a cosmetic item resembling the hairdo of Brock Samson, one of the main characters of the cartoon? In return, TF2 makes a cameo of its own in Season 6, Episode 6 of Venture Bros called It Happening One Night. And no, that is not a mistake, it's actually called It Happening One Night. Robin Walker's Islander So as I've said before, certain weapons of Valve employees have a unique Valve quality. Robin Walker, besides his rocket launcher, also has three different Islanders with unique particle effects. One of them is confirmed to have the Flying Bits particle, which is originally used to render flames on body parts, or Gibbs, and there's footage of it in action. Little is known about the other two Islanders, however, besides the fact that one of them has the strange particle underscore one attached to it. Although Robin Walker's inventory is currently private, you can check the items he had before locking the inventory on tf2items.com. No visual re representation of the attached particles is available, though, and the particles themselves appear to not bear specific names. Meet the Spy was leaked. A day before the official release of the video, iPhone users could watch Meet the Spy thanks to a YouTube bug that allowed them to see private videos. No major differences can be noted between the leaked and the official versions, besides the phrase Intruder Alert said twice in the beginning of the leaked version. Also, one of the alert panels in the official version says leaked video instead of the originally intended lost memory. Needle Jumping Needle jumping is an exploit present in the console version of TF2. To perform it, the player needs to stand over a medic and jump, while the medic shoots their syringe gun upwards, propelling the player higher due to a physics error. Raid Game Mode Before Man vs. Machine, an experimental game mode called Raid was in development. It involved a team of five blue mercs fighting against hordes of red bots. Development for it started in November 2009, and it was led by Mike Booth, who was also the developer behind the AI in Left 4 Dead games and who would eventually work on Man vs. Machine. Some leftover code suggests that bots would check on uncaptured points. As mentioned earlier, there was supposedly a boss battle against Mecha Level 4 Sentry. Overall, judging by the description, Raid resembled Left 4 Dead a lot and, coincidentally, Left 4 Dead 2 was released in November 2009 as well. Sniper knows Pyro's gender. I couldn't find anything related to this entry in particular, but one of the theories suggests that Medic might be the one who knows Pyra's gender, because he is known to experiment on his fellow mercenaries, and some people believe that Medic wouldn't be able to perform those experiments of his with Pyro still wearing the suit. Make of that what you will. Demoman PDA at some point in the development of the game, a PDA item for Demoman did exist, as it is referenced in the engine code, but it was ultimately scrapped. It's unknown what function it would serve, and there are no other scrapped weapons intended for Demoman that could explain the purpose of the PDA. Cut Throwable Weapons Before the game's release, throwable weapons were present in the game. One of the types of throwables would have been grenades, with each class having one of them that had differing functionalities. Medic would have had a heal grenade, similar in design to the holy grenade from the 1975 film Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Demoman was supposed to have a dynamite pack instead of the sticky bob launcher, and so on. You get the idea. 
Grenades were caught early in the testing stages of development because the developers felt that it would make the game less fun to play at and could potentially open a gateway for exploits. Besides the grenades, however, other throwable weapons can be found in the game's code, such as Brick, Repel, which was a throwable air blast, Snowball and even Target Dummy. These were also cut, but no reason was given as to why. Eliminating the Impossible This is the name of a medic item set that pays homage to the Sherlock Holmes books. Equipping the full set gives the player an effect, reduces mystery solving time by up to 88%, and descriptions for seven other items, those being roasted goldfish, charred pocket lint, smoked cheese wheel, burned banana peel, incinerated barn door plank, foreproof secret diary and barely melted capacitor, are changed to form a quote from one of the Sherlock Holmes short stories, specifically the adventure of the copper beaches. The quote reads, Think of the deeds of hellish cruelty, the hidden wickedness which may go on year in, year out in such places and none the wiser. I don't know what the significance of the quote is in relation to TF2. If you have any theories, leave them in the comments below. Longest possible item name. There is no consensus on what the longest possible name for a TF2 item could be. Answers vary, and the longest item name that I could personally find with a simple Google search appears to be 103 characters long including the spaces and reads, somewhat threatening, sophisticated, professional, killstreak carbonado bot killer, sticky bomb launcher MK1. Phew, that was a mouthful. Invisible Heavy Exploit Back in January of this year, Delphi posted a video about the Invisible Heavy exploit that involved picking an engineer class, switching to your wrench, and then clicking the attack button and switching to heavy simultaneously with the use of binds. The player can't move after performing the exploit, but they can use their weapons and killer taunts if they have one. The exploit was patched out soon after the video was posted. Delphi did post a follow-up video by supposedly performing the exploit using a different method, but that turned out to be an April Fool's joke. Scout is a pedophile. This alludes to the description of one of Scout's cosmetics, the Track Terrorizer, which reads, For a brief stint in high school, Scout joined the Track team in one of his many schemes to pick up girls. He was kicked off the team after three days when everyone realized he was 23 years old and also not enrolled in the school. The canonicity of this is, of course, unproven, and nowhere else is this fact mentioned, but it really makes you think, huh? Healing with the Huntsman A while ago there were reports of Huntsman snipers being able to heal enemies and buildings by apparently underdrawing their bow and doing negative damage. I couldn't find information on whether the exploit has since been patched out or not. System breach detected, do not contact the administrator. This message is supposedly related to the release of Man vs Machine and the reveal of Grey Man as the full quote contained the link to the Blood Brothers comic, the precursor to the first issue of the official TF2 comic. Real RCE Exploits RCE stands for Remote Code Execution, the ability to trigger arbitrary code execution over a network. Back in 2017, a buffer overflow vulnerability was found in Valve Source SDK, allowing for RCE to be performed on clients and servers. This affected all major Valve titles, including TF2, but was patched out within a day of its discovery. New reports of RCE came after the source code for TF2 and CSGO was leaked earlier this year, however, they were later discovered to be fabricated and Valve soon confirmed that the source code was originally leaked two years prior to these events, therefore dismissing the possibility of further RCE attacks. What the iceberg refers to, I assume, is that not all of those reports were fake in the end, and some players did suffer an RCE attack. Comments in TF2's code Related to the source code leak, comments were soon discovered inside of the code, with most of them left by disgruntled and seemingly very tired Valve employees who used this as a way to vent their frustrations. A compilation of these comments was composed by the YouTuber Shunik, or Shonik, and you can watch it by following the link in the description. Soldier's Necklace of Ears in issue 6 of the official TF2 comic, The Naked and the Dead, 
One of the characters, Red Heavy's sister Jeanne, is seen wearing a necklace made of ears, which is implied to be a gift from Soldier, who is in a kind of a relationship with Jeanne. Page 35 of the same issue also heavily alludes to the fact that Jeanne and Soldier want to start a family, which may mean that the necklace was given to her instead of a wedding ring because, well, Soldier is a mentally deranged, psychopathic war criminal, so he could see this fitting. And I guess it wouldn't be a surprise that Soldier collects ears of his enemies as trophies. Painted Cow Manglers Cow Mangler is a soldier weapon that, instead of shooting rockets, vaporizes enemies. Cow Manglers can't be painted, but after its initial release there was a bug that allowed players to paint the weapon, prompting Valve to patch it out within the next 5 minutes apparently. Due to this, a very small portion of painted Cow Manglers do exist somewhere. These items are extremely rare and extremely expensive. Medic sold his soul to the devil to create the Medigun. At least the first half of this statement is true and canon. At some point in the past, Medic did sell his soul to the devil, but it is unknown what he received in return specifically. It is heavily theorized that Medic did it to be granted the ability to heal people and ultimately created the, the iconic Medigun. And since it is common knowledge that Medic lost his license, it doesn't sound that far-fetched. The short circuit could destroy the world. This is a theory proposed by Reddit user Kuzang on r tf2 in July 2019. I'm going to oversimplify his explanations for time's sake, but according to the theory, the short circuit projectile is a self-sustaining plasma ball, which makes it a mini sun. The energy created by this ball equates to over 3 million degrees, which would not only decimate the immediate location of the engineer, but could also cause a chain reaction that can potentially ignite the Earth's atmosphere and destroy the whole planet. RTF2 saved someone from suicide. Back in August 2013, user Mancoman posted a thread on r tf2 entitled So today I've decided to raffle off something of random choice because of my life. The contents of the post have since been deleted but it read as follows. Here's the story. I recently made a bad decision in my choices. I made an incredibly rude joke to a female friend and I've only been getting harassed by her friends and mine. I feel like I might not be around much long due to myself. So I, I might raffle off my BP. Nothing more can be said. It's been fun. Members of the community replied to the post by talking Manco Man out of his decision, suggesting solutions and providing general support. User GM Yoda's message in particular stood out. Mancoman later replied, expressing his gratitude and clarifying that he ultimately decided against taking his own life. When I was researching the iceberg, this was one of the first entries I looked at, and it was so heartwarming to know that this community could band together like this and help someone in need. And that's it! Wow, this took a while. I wonder how long the video will turn out to be. You know what? Despite this taking so long, what with the research, script writing, editing, recording and yada yada yada, I actually had a lot of fun. I learned quite a lot about TF2 and its community and discovered some great content creators along the way. Awesome! I will eventually be making a video on a GTA Iceberg chart once a good one is created, but until then, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then I did a great job. Hopefully I won't be lazy so there are more videos to come. <laughs>